so much for joining me for the soft glam look. This is an updated version for 2024. I did one last year that focused more on the texture piece. This time you're featuring this product, which is new to me. This is a skin enhancer in soft pink. I also put that up against one that I actually had talked about quite a bit last year, the Westman Atelier. So you're gonna get to see those side by side for the underglow. We'll also be featuring the Sea Turtle palette in Warm by Chantecaille, which I thought was perfect for this because it's got such beautiful, yet really delicate shades. And I have on no foundation. 2024 seems to be the year of the skin because I've done already a modern matte look where you actually can see the skin and not cover it up. I've done a soft cashmere skin look where again, the skin shows through, but you're just softening it a bit. And then here with the soft glam look, we are really focusing on the skin and strategically concealing only where necessary. That's how I got away with no foundation today and of course a lovely powder. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the keys to this look is to get some under lighting going. So going in with something glowy first. So you could go with something like La Base Illuminatrice by Chanel, which I have tried out in many videos. So you've seen this in action. So that might be a nice one. We also have a couple of other options and one is new. So we've got the Westman Atelier. This is a liquid super loaded in Potapesh, which I love. Actually, let me just show you because we're going to also go in with this product, the number one to Chanel. So I wanted to show you them next to each other. This product is newer to me, the number one de Chanel. Even though it's got a pinky tone, because this is the shade soft pink, it has a bit of warmth to it. So that's the Pot de Westman Atelier over here. Another product I'm thinking of is that Chantecaille Rose Glow Face Tint. That's really nice. It dries down beautifully as well. This has been a go-to, the, the Westman Atelier. And then let's go in with Chanel, which is new to me. So let's see how that looks on this side. But you can see the difference between this glow and no glow. So this is the first time I'm trying out this Chanel product and the difference that I notice is that it doesn't have a shininess to it like the Westman Atelier. So Westman Atelier has a dewier finish on it, you can see, and it feels more hydrating. This one's a little bit more muted. It has a more filtered effect as well. So that's a good comparison in case you were wondering about this product. So if you have shinier skin and you don't want that shininess and the glow, you might want to think about this Chanel. It's really pretty. Drier skin types might really like Westman Atelier, but I think for me, even though I love this, this might be a better fit for my skin type. So let's go in with a bit of concealer. So we're actually skipping foundation altogether here, going really minimal. So many of the trends this year are really focusing on skin, letting it show through, and even showing imperfections, including texture. So the soft glam is going to focus a lot on the skin here as well, but also on the eyes. Chanel under eye concealer right here in number 40. And then we're going to go in with a newer to me product. And this is by Jones Road. This is in the shade Light Peach. And we're going to use this to cover up the dark spots. Just a really, really lightweight concealing. Now this is more of a drier type texture, which is good for me because I am more oily here in the front. I'm just taking that same brush just to help blend this in. And the peach helps to combat that darkness, the discoloration. So they have lots of different shades for different purposes as well. And then they also have this one. I've got shade number nine here, which isn't as peachy, but I'm going to use it here. Areas around my nose where I have some redness. And already it looks like I don't need foundation. Okay, I've got a dark spot here, so let's use that light peach here for this discoloration right here. Little acne scar. Use this as well, just on my chin. So I have a little bit of uneven skin tone there. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit out of order just because of this look. I wanna add my cream products first and then we'll powder. So let's go in with a bronzer I haven't used lately. This is in Truffle. This one's by Westman Atelier. And this is all about really soft blended products. So that's why I'm going mostly with cream today. Uh, this is a Merit number one brush. It's their foundation brush, but I like it for blending for larger areas like this. I have another Merit brush here and let's use that for blush. So we have Chouchette here by Westman Atelier. I'm just gonna take it on the brush here. Almost forgot, I wanna actually do a little bit of highlighter underneath the blush and now that I 
forgot that step. We're gonna kind of sandwich that in there. So let's take a little bit of Nectar by Westman Atelier. Lots of Westman Atelier today. Going with another Mustard Atelier blush in Bichette. This is a little bit more intense, you can see there. We're gonna take this right above where I would normally add blush and just place it a little bit higher, kind of right under the eye here. Almost where I place highlighter. A little bit further to the front though. Taking Chouchette again and then just kind of blending everything together. And do really light setting first, Chanel's Le Beige Powder, and this is in 20. And then let's do a bit of contouring on the nose, Marble by Victoria Beckham. Take a bit of this, I'm gonna add that to the bridge of my nose. Chantecaille's Perfect Blur Powder, smooth everything over. Going with brows, we've got here the Jones Road Beauty, and I've been reading about just getting brows in place, getting them nice and fluffy, but not perfect, and then just filling in where needed. So we're gonna use this. I love this brow gel, it's so good. Builds volume, but doesn't make it chunky. One of the keys here is to choose a brow gel that's actually slightly lighter than the brows because it's a nice soft effect. So Light Brunette here is about a shade lighter than my brows. And my brows are a cool toned. This gives a little bit of, just a hint of warmth without being the wrong shade. Going against the grain here, so you can see them sticking up and then bending them towards the top. because They're kind of long, each of my brow hairs. Okay, I went ahead and filled out the brows. Then I used the Eye Base by Chantecaille in medium and just evened out the skin tone on my eyelids. Getting ready for eyeshadow, but let's go ahead and fill in strategically. We have here the Baby Blade by Victoria Beckham. Love this for just filling in where needed. And for me, that's right up in the front. This is a tricky spot here because if this gets too heavy or too severe, it looks like I'm angry. I just have to be really careful right up towards the front. I can go heavier here right in the middle, but need to be really light-handed at the beginning there. So I think this palette's going to be perfect for a soft glam look because it is very soft. And it has this lovely soft shade. I'm going to use that as my base. You can see the color there. It's really beautiful. Very flattering shade. I'm gonna just apply that all over the lid. And if you were interested in this, in this palette and you missed out on a Chanel palette that was one of my favorites, this is Mediterranean. It approximates that. If you can see here, there were a couple of shades that I noticed were very similar. So this shade here, that's the shade from the Chantecaille. Oh, by the way, this is the Chantecaille Sea Turtle Warm Palette. It was very similar to this shade right here, but the Chanel one has more sparkly bits in it. So here's the Chantecaille and here's the Chanel. They're very close. Really hard to see on my wrist there. And this more olive -y shade from the Mediterranean, this one, the deepest shade, it reminded me of the Chantecaille olive shade, but the Chantecaille shade you'll see here is very sheer compared to that. It's a little bit more green. So this is Chantecaille and this is Chanel. Chantecaille Chanel. So you can see why they reminded me of each other especially those two shades there. So let's go ahead and take this olive shade. I'm just gonna apply it to the crease here. Got a rougher 15 max. I'm gonna go underneath as well, just slightly. Okay, and then let's take this lightest shade here and I'm going to Add that to the center of the lid. Okay, I'm gonna add some Fossil Longa Slash Mascara and let's see where we are. Okay, let's go ahead and clean up the eye area. We have here Clay de Peau in Honey, my go-to concealer for cleaning up the eye area. And then I can get them a little bit more symmetrical this way as well. We're gonna try something a little bit different here. Got another Jones Road here. Let's try this in shade 12, right in this darkest area. 
She does a nice job of brightening. So I'm always trying to find a replacement for that La Prairie. So if you have trouble with a more fluid formula in this area and trying to keep it very focused, this is a nice texture because it stays where you place it. I've kind of been experimenting with powder under the eye to see if I can find one that I really like. I saw Clay de Peau, they've come out actually with a new powder. Then I remembered I have this one by Hermes. I don't know if they still have these, but this is one of the Wayne Goss brushes. I love this because it's not adding too much. It's a very dispersed, the slightest bit of powder. I realized I need to add just a little bit more of the olive to the side. I'm gonna use my very favorite lip liner for the lip. This is by Chantecaille, and this is in the shade Natural. And then we're gonna take one of the lip cheeks here. This one's in Ginger Lily, and I'm going to apply most of it to the center. And I thought we could just add a little bit more blush because I love blush and I think this soft glam look is one of those looks where you can go a little bit heavier, not heavier, but more intense with blush if you really love blush like me because everything is so soft as long as it is really blended well, I think it works. So I've got here the number nine by Valentino and this has a very ethereal appearance to it. It's also sheer though, so you can still see the skin. It's not covering it up, but it also is helping me color correct just a little bit since I did not go in with foundation. So let's powder a little bit. And I also have the Perfect Blur powder in the deeper shade, which is really handy for something like this because again, no foundation, but I just need to even out my forehead here. It's a little bit, um, uneven in its color, if you noticed. So it can look a little bit like an eggshell if I'm not careful and if I don't use any foundation. So I just wanna even that out a little bit. That is the final look. So some thoughts on some of the new products I used. This, I think I liked it better than the Westman Atelier, simply because I have more combo skin and I think if you have dry skin, you might really like this. My mom really loves this. She has drier skin, but because I have more oily skin in the center especially, I love that this was not shiny. It didn't have that dewiness. It had a lovely filtered effect, more like the Chantecaille Their Rose Skin Tint. That one is lovely. It has a similar appearance to me, so I'm curious about this against that Chantecaille now. So let me know if you'd like to see that, but I'll be testing it out anyway. I definitely see this as a no foundation kind of product for me. And then the Sea Turtle in Warm, it's gorgeous. I love both of the palettes. I think both of the palettes from the Sea Turtle collection really complement a soft glam look because they are very soft and delicate. And what I love about that, even though you don't get a lot of color payoff, is that you see the features. That's what I see. I don't see the makeup. I see that there's something beautiful in the eye area, but it really focuses on the actual eye shape of the wearer. So doesn't distract, it just focuses really beautifully. These Jones Road pencils worked really well in these dark spots as well as right here in those darkest areas for me. Lovely, great to travel with, they're very compact and lightweight. Let me know if you have any tips and tricks for this soft glam kind of look, I would love to know. But I think underglow again is key, so if you have a great product for underglow, let us know what that is because that's how this is different. It's because the glow is underneath versus on top. We add a lot of products with glow on top typically, or at least I do, versus adding glow underneath. Definitely don't skip this underglow step if you are trying out the soft glam look. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.